Hello everyone, today I'm going to talk to you about the lessons I learned from Hub Sea World Research Institute's Sustainable Seafood Program. So, I interned at the San Diego Aquaculture Facility. It contains broodstock tanks of the species Paralithes californicus, or California halibut, and Cereal dorsalis, commonly known as yellowtail. So broodstock tanks are basically tanks holding mature adults to harvest the, the fer their fertilized eggs. The California halibut are for their restocking program, where species raised by Hub Sea World Research Institute will be released back into the wild to benefit the health of their wild stocks. The Yellowtail project is for researching, developing, and improving methods for commercially scaling viral production and grow out for a future industry. The aquaculture facility also contains juvenile tanks and larval tanks so that they can grow out their species in-house. A revolutionary project in Hub Sea World Research Institute is their integrated multi-trophic aquaculture system containing mussels, sea cucumber, and microalgae. So the idea is to integrate these large predatory species with these smaller organisms that can filter out the water and improve water quality. So the first tasks I learned were the opening procedures where I'd go around and check the dissolved oxygen tanks of each tank holding fish to make sure they're within the desired range, then go around and change oxygen stones in the broodstock and juvenile tanks and record water temperature of each tank holding fish. So my main task was to do egg collections. I'd go around to the two California halibut and three yellowtail broodstock tanks to determine if they spawn that day. And if they spawned, I'd go grab an aquarium net and collect the spawns and put it into a smaller bucket that would be transferred to the laboratory. Once the spawn was transferred to the laboratory, I would measure out the volume of the eggs in graduated cylinders. So I'd basically measure the volume based on three characteristics of the eggs, if they're floating, neutrally buoyant, or negatively buoyant. It's important to separate the spawns because of the vast amount of eggs from a spawning event, the fecal matter and algae that could be collected in the egg traps to get an accurate estimation of the volume of eggs from a spawn. Once you do the egg counts, you go ahead and do photos for egg measurements. So you take photos based on the floating, neutrally buoyant, and negatively buoyant eggs containing at least 20 eggs per photo to measure the oil and corine, which is an indicator of the health of the eggs. So another data collection process that I was involved in was the egg and larval data collection, where you basically pick a spawn and create a survival bucket. So you place a bunch of eggs in a bucket that would be later hatched and freeze at least 50 grams of eggs for future research. Then you'd create hatching and survival beakers. So the hatching beaker was determined how many eggs from that spawn would hatch. And then for the survival beakers, you wanted to determine how long the larvae could survive on their yolk cell. Once the eggs hatched in the survival bucket, you were able to do dry weight samples and photos of the larvae for future research. So one of the tasks I participated in was monitoring the growth of their juvenile yellowtail. So in order to do this, you would place about 20 yellowtail in a smaller tank and add this chemical called tricane methane sulfonate, which basically calms these fish down so you can record the length and weight without them flopping around. So while I was at the Institute, these juveniles were being fed pellet feed. As they grew older, we were able to switch their diet to cut frozen sardines and squid. One of the interesting aspects of Hub Sea World Research Institute is their ability to do live feeds. So they grow out Artemian rotifers for feeds for their larval grow outs. So right here, this image to the left, you can see I'm simulating me counting a sample to estimate the amount in each batch tank before you would harvest the sample, the Artemia or rotifers. So these are a species of zooplankton that is a part of larval diet. So the final task I was a part of was the broodstock feeds. 
So for Paralectes californicus or California halibut, they were being fed sardines, arcade squid, and shrimp. For cereal dorsalis or yellowtail, they were being fed sardines and arcade squid. These feeds were being supplemented with the vitamin mixture made in house and were injected into the sardines and market squid so that the fruit stocks would actually consume this vitamin supplement which would benefit their growth and the spawns that they spawn during their spawning events. So the most important thing that I learned was how to update fruit stock feeds. So while you're feeding these brood stocks, you are monitoring their behavior, seeing how fast they swim towards the feed, when they slow down, if they come right up to you while they're feeding them. And then you'd record this behavior in the notebook, uh, basically outlining how the feeding event went. So for a cereal or sauce, you're basically monitoring their behavior, but then for Paralithes californicus, you're also monitoring their behavior, but you're also going to leave the feed out overnight because they would eat feed that was on the bottom of the tank. And you'd weigh out that leftover feed the next day to determine how much they consumed in order to correctly estimate what you're gonna weigh out for the next feeding event. So it's very important to update feeds based on their feeding behavior so you can reduce the amount of leftover feed in tanks and make sure brood stocks are consuming as much as possible. So special thanks to the staff at Hub SeaWorld Research Institute